Hi, my name is Norberto, and I am an Applications Engineer at Maxim Integrated. With more battery powered systems being deployed today, there hasn't been much talk about how to authenticate the hardware that's connected to these portable devices. Most importantly, with the wide array of battery cell chemistries available today, there needs to be a simple and robust way to ensure that you're connected to an authentic battery for safety and optimal performance. Today, I'll be looking at a simple way to add battery authentication with fuel gauging without requiring battery characterization using the MAX17211. Battery authentication ensures safety when you're replacing the battery for your device. Because each cell chemistry is unique, you need to make sure that your device always connects to a proper battery. Battery authentication also adds reputation protection to ensure that your device always connects to an OEM battery so that it's always properly powered and recharged. This also helps prevent customers from buying batteries from third-party vendors and make sure that your pockets stay fat. For hardware authentication using SHA-256, you usually need a dedicated circuit in your system to carry out all of the complex computational tasks. Since our case is about rechargeable battery authentication, it would be useful to have fuel gauging in the same chip that provides state of charge in addition to compensation for cell aging, temperature, and discharge rate. No fear, the search ends here. The Max17211 provides all of these functional features in one integrated circuit. Check out the link below to head over to its product page. For this demo, we will be using the Max17211 X EV kit, which is a already built and tested evaluation kit. It provides a quick and easy way to evaluate the Max17211. Included in this evaluation kit is a DS91230 Plus USB adapter and a RJ11 cord. A single cell lithium ion rechargeable battery does not come included, so make sure you have one handy. For this demo, we're going to keep hardware connection simple and just connect the lithium ion rechargeable battery across the battery plus J1 pin and the battery negative J5 pin. I soldered this battery holder using a wire for each pin beforehand. Let's take a look at the Max17211 under a microscope. Fuel gauging with Maxim's algorithm requires no battery characterization. Cryptographic authentication is possible using a SHA-256 engine that is integrated in this chip. The Max17211 communicates using the one-wire protocol. The one-wire input-output bus is here. Only one wire is required for fuel gauging authentication. Now let's get the EVKit software set up. First, we have to go to the Max17211 product page. Click on the Design Resources tab. Then click on the link below the Tools and Models section under Software. Click on the link to the right of file name to download the installation file. Locate the file on your computer and double click to open it. Once the software opens up, you will have to connect the USB adapter to your computer. The model gauge M5 tab shows by default when opening the eval software. Let's head over to the authentication tab to learn more how to set up the Max17211 before any authentication can be done. The upper left hand corner shows the register addresses for the 160 bit randomized challenge used in SHA-256 computations. Clicking the randomized challenge button makes the eval software generate a new pseudo random number. When you're ready to deploy a MAX17211 into the wild, make sure to use a robust entropy source for your randomized challenge. For this demo, a pseudo random generated challenge will do. The ROM ID is also shown in this corner. This unique 64 bit ID pertains to the specific 17211 I have here on my desk. The upper the right hand corner shows the 160 bit secret key the EVAL software has in memory. In a freshly minted 17211, the secret key is all zeros by default. Remember, the secret key on the MAX17211 cannot be directly written or read by the user. In order to compute the same message authentication code, also known as a MAC, which proves authenticity, the host, which in this case is the EVAL software, must know the same secret key inside the MAX17211. How do you program a secret key into the MAX17211 when you cannot directly write it to memory. You use the compute next secret function command. This way, a new secret key is generated internally by performing a SHA-256 computation using the old internal secret and a randomized challenge.
challenge. To prevent any one entity from knowing the complete secret value, the CompuNex secret function can be repeated multiple times by sending additional randomized challenges. This way, you know that the secret key is in fact secret. To compute a new secret with the ROM ID, click on the Compute Next Secret with ROM ID button. This button is useful when you want a unique secret key for each MAX17211 you deploy. If you want all of your batteries to use the same secret key, then you would use a Compute Next Secret without ROM ID button. Once a new secret is generated, you will see a success message in the GUI. To authenticate, use a random challenge and then click on the Compute Mac with ROM ID button. A success message should appear in the GUI saying that the Mac computed by the Mac 1721 is the same as the Mac computed by the Evil software. An identical Mac computation means that both the Mac 1721 and the host, which in this case is the Evil software, both know the same secret private key. In the case where a clone host does not know the secret private key of the MAX17211, a MAC that is completely different than one generated by the MAX17211 will result in authentication failure. The same logic applies if a clone battery was connected to a host instead. So there you have it. By using the evaluation kit in software, we saw how the MAX17211 can authenticate itself to a host in order to verify whether or not the battery cell attached to it is authentic. The MAX17211 is one of four flavors in our battery authenticator portfolio. Other versions include the ability to communicate via the I2C protocol or fuel gauge more than one battery cell. Thank you for watching this video on how to prevent battery cloning. See you next time.